the truth is that the word Messiah, anointed, is a generic term that applies to anyone or anything that had oil put on it. Now, here's the problem we're going to have for this morning. There are many messiahs in the Bible. Many messiahs. But today we're talking about a special messiah that Jews and Christians all refer to as the messiah. So, for example, if I tell you that my mother is president of her synagogue and my father is president of his block association and my sister is president of her debating club, these are all presidents, but especially if I was sitting in New York now or somewhere in the United States, I told you I just received a phone call from the president, you would know who that was. There is the president. And then there are all these presidents. So the question is this. You have many messiahs in the Bible. Many, many messiahs. But what does the Bible teach us about the messiah? And here the problem is very simple. The term never appears in the Bible. The Bible never says anything directly about someone that it calls the Messiah. The Bible will never say something like, the Messiah will do X, Y, or Z. The Messiah will be X, Y, or Z. The Messiah will be called Bob. The Messiah will be tall. The Messiah will be great. The Messiah will be humble. We don't find any passage, not one in the Bible, where it speaks about someone that is referred to as not Mashiach, but in Hebrew, Ha-Mashiach, with the definite article. Ha-Mashiach, with the definite article. The Messiah. That's our problem for this morning. And I'm hoping that in about a half hour we'll be able to finish this and then have time for questions. Does everyone hear the problem? Everyone understand the problem? How do we have a concept about the coming of the Messiah, for example, or a concept about the Messiah when you can't find the word in the Bible? Because what you could do normally is get a concordance. A concordance is a list of every word in the Bible. You get a concordance. You look up the word the Messiah. You could find 25, 30 references, look them up, and there you get your picture. You get your blueprint. You get your vision of what the Messiah is. But we don't have recourse to an index or a concordance for the word the Messiah. So that's going to be our challenge. Where does the idea come from? There are basically four kinds of material in the Bible. If you read the entire Hebrew scriptures from cover to cover, the whole Bible, you'll basically encounter four kinds of material. You'll find his- history and narrative. Right? You'll find many stories in the Bible about what happened in the past. The stories of Adam and Noah and Abraham and Joshua. Many, many stories in the Bible, narrative. Now, if you were going to try and find a place in the Bible which told you about some ultimate figure who will come in the future, that may not be the best place to find information about a future personality if you're looking at stories that talk about the past. So when we talk about narrative, we're not really going to be looking there. You have many passages in the Bible which are legislative, legal, So there's a lot of material in the Bible which gives you the laws, the laws of Passover, the laws of keeping kosher, the laws of marriage, the laws of going to war. So unless you're able to find the laws of the Messiah, you'll be out of luck. So the legal parts of the Bible are also not going to be fertile ground for us to explore this morning. A third part of the Bible is what's referred to normally as poetry and slash wisdom literature. For example, the book of Psalms. Beautiful poems about mainly David and his relationship with God and how he felt comforted by God and he felt protected by God. You have books like Proverbs where King Solomon gives us advice about living. King Solomon's book Ecclesiastes Kohelet, which is more philosophical and it ponders questions about the meaning of life. So you have the book of Eob, the book of Job, which ponders the question of why righteous people suffer. So there are many books in the Bible which are poetry or wisdom literature philosophy. Also, it's not going to be there where you're going to find information about some great personality who is supposed to come in the future. Which leaves us one last part of the Bible. Aside from history, laws, and philosophy, poetry, there's only one other part of the Bible you're going to find, which is prophecy. Now, what is a prophet? What did a prophet do? People often assume that a prophet was there to tell the future, which is not true. 
the definition of prophecy is not a future fortune teller. We see this, for example, in the first time the word prophet is used in the Bible. Anyone know where it is? Moses didn't want to be God's messenger to Pharaoh. Moses kept on complaining, what am I? I can't do anything. I don't even speak that well. So God says to Moses, don't worry. Aaron, your brother, will be your prophet. Your navi. So obviously, prophet here doesn't mean predictor, fortune teller. It means what? Mouthpiece. Spokesperson. That's all a prophet is. A prophet is someone who speaks the message of God. What was the major message the prophets came to bring? If you go through all the prophets, they had one major job, which was to scold the Jewish people. That was their job. Their job was not to make us feel good. It wasn't that you good boys and girls, you're doing great, keep up the good work. The job of the prophet was much like the job of the guy that you hire in the gym, right, to keep you working hard, right? Come on, lazy bones, get on that stairmaster and work harder. You're, you're not... Right? That is the job of the prophet, was to tell the Jewish people, you're falling down at a job, you're not doing well, you're falling asleep, you're violating God's covenant, wake up, get your act together, right? Improve. That was the job of the prophets. It was to yell at the Jewish people. That was the major job. However, if you go through all the prophets, they also did something else. They understood, because God let them know this, that it is going to be difficult to be a Jew throughout history. Jews are going to have a hard history. We're not going to be the most beloved people in the world. We're going to be very, very much, you know, wanderers and persecuted. It's difficult to be a Jew. It's always been hard to be a Jew. So the prophets also gave the Jewish people messages of encouragement. It's going to be okay, they would tell the Jewish people. In the future, the world will not be broken forever. The world's going to get better. And when we're trying to find a vision of this future personality, who will come and do something, it's in these prophecies that we're going to look. It's not going to be in the prophecies where the prophets beat up the Jewish people, you miserable people, you're you know, violating God's covenant. You're not going to find a message there about some great person. But when you look in the prophets where they write about what's going to happen in the future, that's where we're going to look. Let's look at our pages here. I hope you all have access to one. If you don't, please share with someone that does. Or if you don't, have the ability to share with someone, just listen. We say in Hebrew a lot, Shema Yisrael. Listen, Jewish people. 